got another good one for you today. I've also been asked to do this quite a few times and uh, I'm finally going to do it, but um, the, the spark timing video is going to come with a disclaimer, so get ready for this. Um, I think everybody probably knows, uh, and if you don't, here's, your, here's the clue that I can't tell you what spark value to put in your engine. Uh, not not in a YouTube video. Um, that is something that you really need to do some research for yourself and based on your architecture, um, what I mean by that is whether you have a small block Ford or a small block Chevy or a big block Chevy or uh, a 2JZ or whatever you're working on. I, I, I don't have uh, spark values for, for everybody and what the magical number is. And the reality of it is is you really need to do a static timing check to be certain that you're actually putting in the spark timing value to the engine that is in the table. And, and I want to stress that, that it's very important to step one, get a, um, a timing mark on your engine um, with a timing pointer on your balancer and get a timing light. Put whatever ECU system you're using, whether it's Holly or Fuel Tech or Max, or it, it doesn't matter what it is, just verify, even a stock one, just verify that you're actually getting the commanded timing um, to the engine. A couple degrees may not seem like much until you're really leaning on things and, and, that, and it's too much. So, all of that said, I'm going to make a video here on how to build a spark table that will work for an NA application and part two of this video will be a boosted application um, mainly because you really you build the you build the boost table based on the NA table so uh, we're gonna start with an NA and go from there um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a theoretical value today that the best timing for wide open throttle uh, of my theoretical engine here is gonna be 30 degrees and I'll give you some, at the end of the video, I'll give you some um, advice on, on what to start with with your most common uh, engine platforms that, that are typically what we're dealing with with the, the, the folks I hang out with. So uh, we'll go through all that, but uh, just to get started here, we're going we're gonna to use the theoretical value of 30 degrees. So the reason that you're going to build a timing table, that you want to build a timing table, is this region right here. Um, Holly does an excellent job of making something that will run. Um, not always great, but it, it probably will make noise. And that's, I run into this so often, especially guys that have stick cars that are not getting through this 1200 to 2000 range fast enough. And what's happening is you're, you're like more than doubling your timing over this 800 RPM window. And if you have a stick car in, in this range and it's and it's coming in and out of 36 to 12 degrees, you end up with a really serious issue where the car will accelerate really hard when it gets into 36 and then you get out of the gas because you're like, holy cow, like it came alive. And then now you're down here in the 12 degree range, 18 degree range, and it, and it is slow again. And you, you don't have any power. You keep having to put your, your foot in it to get it to, to accelerate. So we can fix this. We can smooth this out. The general rule for me is I never want to have a sharp transition for uh, anything in the timing table. Uh, you can get away with a little more of a sharp transition in the fuel table even though you really shouldn't have it there, um, but it won't be as abrupt as a timing table will be. So let's just go ahead and uh, get started in this. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that the bottom engine RPM axis is sufficient for what you need. If you have a 9,000 RPM engine, you probably need to make sure that uh, your upper cells go to at least 9,000 or somewhere in there close. Um, we don't really need five, six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred 800, 900 RPM on a car that idles at 1,000. Um, we can widen the table out, but there's really no need. Um, th this this table is sufficient. It's what we're going to get started with. Do what you want to do with your own. All right, so step one is to turn this simple setting off. We're going to go to a 2D table. Now, remember a few minutes ago I said I'm going to start, and I, I'm going to basically say that my engine wants 30 degrees of timing at wide open throttle, and we'll talk about how to actually figure out what it does want, but 
this is for the purposes of building a table um, to start with. So basically, I'm going to start with the entire table. I'm, it's, I'm not going to put 30 in, right? Because we're building a startup table. I'm not going to put everything that I expect to have. What I am going to put in is about three degrees less than that. And I know that three doesn't sound like a whole lot, but we don't want this thing to be so bad that it barely runs. You don't want to put 15 in. You don't want to half it. Um, I've seen plenty of teams that come to me, guys, saying, man, like, it runs fine, but it's just got no power. And then I look at the timing table, and it's got 15 degrees in it wide open throttle on, say, an LS engine. It's not enough. That's you're, it's, it's never going to be enough. Um, it's just going to make the thing lazy. So, like I said, three degrees off. I'm going to just pick whatever I expect to have minus my three degrees. So we're going to put 27 in the entire table just to start with. And we build off of our wide open throttle timing from there. Uh, if I want to idle at, let's say, 800 RPM, I'm going to grab everything over to 800 RPM, and I'm going to put in half of my 27 value. So I'm going to come in here, and let's just put in, I don't know, 14. That's close enough. That's, you know, 14 times 2 is 28. That's close enough. Uh, 13, and I'm not going to put a half degree value in for an idle number. Um, and then the next thing that we want to do is we want to kind of go look at our fuel table and see where peak torque is going to be. I'm using a generic fuel table. This is a Holly fuel table that's kind of jacked towards the, the high end. But, um, you know, typical peak torque on like an LS engine, the small block Chevy, uh, uh, maybe some of your bigger uh, big block Chevys. Um, small block Fords, pretty much all that stuff. If you have a 7,000 RPM engine, you're going to make peak torque somewhere between four and 5,000 RPM. And so if we're looking at the timing table here, somewhere between four and 5,000 RPM, I'm going to come in here, go 35 to 55. I want to highlight this whole range and just really the bottom half of the table if it's in A. And I'm going to put in basically whatever my, uh, whatever my base timing here is, I'm going to click the O key and do an offset and I'm going to multiply this by 1.4. Yeah, that's not bad. So when you when you have a, a cylinder pressure situation where your your cylinder pressure is quite a bit low, um, you really do need an, quite a bit more timing in order to um, get basically best timing for that situation. MBT, maximum brake torque timing. So um, the, the reason for that is because when you're in a lower cylinder pressure situation, you basically have less uh, molecules of fuel and air hanging out in the cylinder, and so they're farther apart. And when they're farther apart, it takes more time in order to get them to burn, and therefore you, you need an extra amount of spark timing. Um, from here, I'm going to grab these cells that correspond to that height right there. And this, I want to stress here, like I'm not, this is more of what this is going to look like. This is not necessarily what you need to do given your map column, but I, I'm just, this is what the shape of this needs to look like. I can't make a video for you guys that tells you exactly what timing to put in your, in your vehicle. All right, so I'm going to click the R key and we're going to fill row values. So now we got R and I'm going to come over here and we'll, we'll do something like, 32 and fill it as well. I always put a little tip out over here because it, at, at this really high RPM, you definitely don't want the engine to be accelerating. We're not expecting it to be accelerating. We want to promote deceleration if you are in the really low um, manifold pressure situation, uh, basically closed throttle at 7,000 RPM. You're not trying to accelerate. So we're going to pull some timing to, get to, to promote going in the wrong direction. Okay, so I typically will leave the first three or four rows at full wide open throttle timing, basically f about here-ish. And the reason that I do that is because you never know what kind of situation you're going to drive this thing up a mountain or something and you want to make sure that uh, you're not at wide open throttle with extra timing if you uh, start to have some manifold pressure coming down. So 
uh, first three or four rows I'll, I'll leave in there but typically what I like to do on your on, your, on a typical V8 at least um, again I have to say this if you have something other than a V8 or some exotic engine this may not be the correct way to do this for you you have to go out and do your own research for yourself and figure out what your particular engine most commonly wants and the reason we need to know what it most commonly wants is because this is a startup table there's the tuning process that goes along with this involves reading spark plugs and so you have to be able to do that later on but what we're trying to do here is get close enough that we can fire the thing up and uh, and make some pulls with it uh, do some cruising with it and uh, have a place to start that's honestly pretty close so typically on your your v8s i like to have uh, my wide open throttle timing uh, in, a, in a typical street engine application uh, all the way in by like 2800 3000 rpm uh, you may need to push that up or something a little bit if you've got a pretty exotic race engine you may even want it lower if you have a pretty exotic race engine that's the fringes that's not what we're talking about in this video uh, so I'm going to grab everything from here that's 3000 rpm I've got four rows, 105 to 93 kPa. I've got four rows here um, of 27 degrees. And so that's gonna be my wide open throttle timing. I'm gonna fill all the way over uh, with the highlighter and I'm gonna do a C function. So this is either click the C key or right click fill columns. So now you see what that did. I filled that column all the way down. Uh, I can come over here grab this corner pocket go all the way over and now we're going to click the F key I'm going to or come in here and I'm going to fill selected so this fills in two directions check this out look at that so you got a pretty cool little uh, little table built here and the only thing left that we need to do is just feather this in on a smooth ramp all the way over I'm going to click the R key one more time there you go so now we have this nice smooth transition. You can see we come off idle at 14 degrees, 915, 1017, 1200, 18. We don't have these sharp lines. So we're now making that same 36 degree swing. It takes us from 800 to 3000, 3250 RPM to get into 36 degrees rather than 12 to 36 over 800 RPM before. Um, this is not always the right answer this is just simply a really good place to start. I'm going to show you a couple more things just for uh, for giggles while we're at it. Uh, sometimes what I'll do if I have a car that's got a really lightweight clutch or a really lightweight converter or a um, bunch of camshaft for whatever reason, uh, if I have my idle RPM set at 800, then right underneath that, I'll come in here and put a timing wall. You know, I might put double whatever that is. And all that's there for is that if the engine does dip below your uh, your idle RPM, then it's going to hit this quick increase of timing that will help it. I'm not going to say prevent, but it will seriously help it not want to stall. Uh, you don't have to do that on everything. It's purely just a, a as-needed basis that I do that. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can come in here and, and even get a little more fancy. I would not do this to your idle cells or your wide open throttle cells, but you can click smooth a couple times and you can really round this thing out. If you have a situation where um, the engine doesn't want to decelerate well, uh, first off, I don't think you're going to run into it with this table, this, this particular shape, but let's just say you did. Let's just say it wants to get hung up in the uh, 1500 to 2000 range on the way down or it just comes down through there really slowly what you can do is come in here and grab those cells so it just so you know let's say you you here's how you drive through the table you would uh, give the engine throttle and it's going to run up through here where my mouse is go up to wide open throttle you gotta make your pull you let out of the gas and it drops straight down at that rpm and it's going to drive right back through here to your idle and so you could grab this region right here and you can control left key say twice and that'll just knock a little timing out of it but you can keep doing that a little bit more knock some more timing out of it and all that's going to do is just give you a range here where um, it wants to promote deceleration of the engine 
Uh, what I would do now is just grab all this right here, smooth twice, and now you got kind of a nice round area to, to, to drive through here that would that would get you back into idle. Again, same thing. Don't have to do that all the time. Uh, more just a uh, a recommendation for a tool if, if it's something that you find that you need. Uh, if you do get into that situation, make sure that your throttle blade is not too far open at idle. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the for the NA table, guys. Uh, some quick references. Uh, this is not me telling you to put this value in. This is just me telling you this what's what's typical, so that you don't have to go look this up. For the majority of the guys that are watching this video, uh, are probably LS guys. I find that LS engines typically take about 28 or 29 degrees um, in order to achieve best power on the standard cylinder heads. Uh, for say LS3, LS1, LS2, 5.3 heads, all that stuff tends to take about 28 or 29. Personally, I've found that LS7 heads tend to take a little bit less, maybe 26-ish, I think is what I've got in mind. Um, I think the reason for that most commonly is, well, first off, they're a little higher compression engine than, than your other ones. Um, and it, you, it's kind of backwards because you think bigger bore, so you think a little faster um start on, on timing would be good because you 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 have more distance to travel with your burn but um, that's not really the case it seems it seems like the chamber in LS7 is quite a bit better um, I think they are seeing seed and, and especially with them aftermarket heads tends to make them respond really well to, to timing so uh, what I typically will do is I'll, I'll go out and make a pull come back uh, on fresh part plugs, I should I should add, come back, pull the plugs, look at the plugs, and try to get the timing mark in the plug. There's going to be a little line on the bottom of the ground strap of your plug. Try to get that in the center of the bend, maybe just a skosh to the to the thread side, and that's peak. That's as, that's really as far as you want to go. You got to make sure that you have the right heat range as well. Um, if anybody has any questions about this, feel free to leave it in the comments below, and I'll I'll try to address it. Maybe even do another video. Uh, talking about compression ratio and, and um, spark plug heat range, all that good stuff. But um, trying to wrap this up, want to want to also throw out a few more. Like I typically run into small block Chevys that want 35, 36 degrees. Typically run into big block Chevys that want 34-ish or so degrees. Typically run into small block Fords that want about 32 or 33. Um, sometimes you'll get into your small block Fords that they have aftermarket cylinder heads that are quite a bit better than the factory head and you'll you'll be more in the LS range of like 27, 28, 29. Uh, that's why I stress knock three, four, five degrees out of this thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take more than about six um, to build your table. And the reason I say that is because now if you're getting that far out, that's where you're approaching the point where uh, it could potentially be lazy in some spots, and, and you don't really want that. You want to be able to tune the thing um, with it running halfway decent. That said, in my opinion, what I have run into is that the spark timing value really doesn't affect the fueling a whole lot, um, maybe if any. If you can really tune the fuel table first with this thing got four, five, six degrees out of it, and then once your fuel table is nice and dialed, you come back and you, you really can just put in a degree at a time and make some pulls, look at your spark plugs, and if you have a dyno, even better, because you can just read the dyno, and you'll you'll have really good success that way. Um, that's the kind of the fastest way you can safely get to where you're going. And uh, honestly, that's, that's really about it. So this will be part one. Really appreciate you guys sticking with me to this point. I know I always talk too much, but um, I think it's honestly really useful information. I don't know that I can do it any quicker and, and stick true to me. So I'm um, going to go ahead and we'll cut it off right here for the NA portion. And we'll pick back up uh, pretty soon with the uh, the boost version of this. And we'll, we'll do the boost version for um, pump gas. Then I'll talk a little bit about race gas and E85. So. Uh, that said, thanks a bunch. Do the old deal. Like, subscribe, comment below, shoot me an email, whatever you need. I'll help as much as I possibly can. And. Uh